everybody. What up? We back on the radar from home. I got my boy on the line. Fendi P, what's cracking, bro? They're like 100. What's happening? Smoking Partners out now, man. Uh, congrats on the new project. Uh, off the rip, I got to ask you, because I feel like, you know, obviously the, the elephant in the room before I do every interview is, how are you? How are you living? How's Corona uh, treating you? I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, 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 self, uh, I'm social distancing. Good. I'm uh, hand out the way. So um, I'm only out for the studio. Studio is essential. <laughs> of course, of course. Now, this project came out, like, right at the beginning of um, the coronavirus pandemic and when things started, started to shut down. So what was it like dropping the album, like, right at the top of, of all this, like, madness? I wish I, wish I would have known shit was going to shut down. We would have <laughs> shot more videos. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it really, only, only problem that I have with it, it, it fucked us up to where we can't move around. Right, and I feel like it, it's important for us to be on the road. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. So that's the only thing it really fucked up. You know, people gonna listen to the shit regardless. So we just can't move around and touch the people like we like. Now, what, was there gonna be like a tour that accompanied this, or was, or what was supposed to like, I guess, originally be planned for the the release of the project? Facts. I was planning on going to Atlanta, so <laughs> trees i was going i'll try to go all over man Shit. I'm, I'm bro i'm so mad that like concerts are like i feel like that's the one thing that i miss is being able to like go to concerts and like you know obviously you know uh you guys being from the south and like it's tough because you know you want to come up to new york you want to perform you want to do shit in other cities and it's just like now things have just slowed it down like all the way it's, it's it ain't slowed down that shit stopped the plain old shit stop um, so with this project, you know, first of all, I want to tell you how much I, I love the project. I'm a big fan of, of Swang and Eye of the Tiger. I had those shits on repeat uh, when I was listening this morning. And I know, you know, you've been, uh, you've been with Currency and you guys have been working together for a long time. So I'm sure you've been asked a lot this already, but what took so long for y'all to kind of, I guess, put together like uh, this tape, you know, do a, a collab, a collab tape? I guess it was more of a, a timing thing. Like, Spitter, he strategized everything. He probably felt like it wasn't time. Mm. I, I think, personally, me, if I look back at my, at my path of coming in, mm -hmm. it wasn't time. And that's okay. honest. How I feel, honestly. Okay. It wasn't time. It, um, like, I wasn't a rapper. Like, I just, I like music, and I just started working on the thing and just started working on music, so... Me personally, a lot of my earlier shit was a lot of it, it needed some touching up to do some polishing. So over the time of working under him, it allowed me to work on my own craft and polish my shit up. So mm -hmm. to me, I felt like he felt like it was time. Now mm -hmm. it was the time. Mm -hmm. And so what I know you've been with um you've been working with him for a long time, and I feel like something that artists don't get asked enough is like, you know, what was your life like, you know, how has your life changed from before, you know, you started this rap shit and, and working with Currency to now, you know, post smoking partners and all this, like how, how has your life changed? Like overall? It's beautiful as fuck. <laughs> I mean, like, you, um, yeah, I realize I'm a, I'm a street nigga. Like I, I be in the hood all day. So just being, able to be on the on to go on tour with Spitter and be on the road like um shit I always say if it wasn't for like foster care and adoption I don't think I'd be in this uh, in this position like rapping mm -hmm. like I got I got brand new ass 9-11 and I never had a radio right <laughs> you feel me like I, mm -hmm. I've, I've been having Rolexes and, and jewelry and shit so it's it's wonderful just being under him and um taking the lead that him and Musa uh, that's laying down the, the blueprint. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I wouldn't trade it. It's just like for nothing with me. Like, I don't even want no record label. Like, I don't want – everything I do is just like I ain't got nothing but just like Now, know? that's interesting that you say that because you brought up, um, you know, the radio and whatnot. So do you, like – when you make records, like, you don't aim to do anything that might, you know, hit radio or, you like, what's your, like, process with that? Because – I mean, you seem pretty confident in your own suit. Like, you're like, I don't really need a radio record and whatnot. I don't need one, but I want one. You feel me? I want the money. Like, I, want to be <laughs> I can't even be mad at that. 
I want I want a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars to do a festival. Mm-hmm. Radio will get you that. Radio will get you commercials. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I don't want a radio record. It's just that I'm in the city. I'm in New Orleans. We ain't got a radio station to play that shit. Mm, okay. You know? so I can make. A, I can. I feel like shit that I make should be on the radio. Right. But they're not open enough to put the put the music on the radio like how other cities is. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm forced to fuck with the underground. Mm, okay. I'm forced to fuck with the internet. And the internet kind of don't want you to be quote unquote commercial. But at the same time, they ain't got enough money for me to live like now when I'm not cool enough to rap. That's what it's about. Okay. So getting on the radio, getting those records, expanding the brand. When I ain't cool enough to be Fendi P no more, and then when they got another fucking Fendi P coming out, <laughs> I still won't be able to buy a car and, right. and buy a story. And, and, and I want my kids to reap the benefits of the work that I've been putting down. Being underground, I'm going to be fucking rapping forever trying to establish that kind of financial stability. You feel me? Right, right. And I was reading this article about you in Billboard um, earlier today, and you were speaking about it. was around the time that uh, Smoke and Partners came out, and you were talking about how you weren't going to let the coronavirus, uh, like, stop you and, and uh, stop your creativity, stop your creation of new content, music. So how has that, you know, how have you been, you know, creating during this time and keeping things fresh and working to just put out new stuff? It just um, really just caught, it's taking more time since we got time. And, mm. and I feel like in life, like either you got money to get some shit done like this, or you got time to learn it and do it in enough time and get it done. So I, I shoot a video and instead of shooting it in one house, I rent two houses. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Have the girl in one house, I'm over here in one house. <laughs> right. And make it look like we was together at the end. Mm, okay, like that's smart. So I'm not even by you. Right. You feel me? So I'm still safe. I'm still getting the video done. Mm-hmm. I'm in the studio. I'm always in the studio. No more than two, three people. Mm, okay. If I got an engineer or me and my homegirl, me and my homie, something like it's never a crowd. Even with my video shoots, it's never a crowd unless I'm going to shoot in the hood and everybody just outside. And then everybody just pull up. Right. I've been practicing social distancing for a long time. <laughs> Do you, so you're like you're like a, the type of artist who like when they be in the studio, you just like to lock in by yourself, or you know, like you said, two or three people, and just get to get to working instead of having like a whole function happening around you. Man, listen, motherfuckers be asking the phone, be talking about, yeah, you know, I'm just chilling in the studio, nigga. I'm in the studio. <laughs> Your ass not in the studio. Motherfuckers <laughs> talk, talk to you like like I'm trying to write to the song, motherfucker mm-hmm. in my ear, motherfucker telling me about what this motherfucker was doing, like, it's just too much. Mm. Like, I need to focus. Like, right. I need to focus on what I need to do. I feel mm. like that's a problem because I just like to lock in. If I'm focused on something, I'm going to do it. I ain't yeah. about to stop it. It's done. I don't think that's a problem. I think that that's a, that's a valid thing to say because I feel like a lot of artists, especially, you know, a lot of young artists nowadays, it'd be like 30, 30 people in the studio, and it's like, how can you create new content and new you know, create quality stuff when it's like you got like a million people talking in your ear like you were just saying. You got your boy on the phone man, telling you about like what's going on over here. And you're like, but I'm trying to work. You know what I'm saying? Man, listen, bro. It's even worse when your partners rap. <laughs> or when you're trying to rap, them bitches be over here to the left or the right rapping the whole verse while you trying to get your shit together. Like, partner, shut the fuck up. Like, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> I can only I can only imagine how annoying that is. Um, something else I, I I read earlier and I wanted to ask you about was so I know your name used to be Corner Boy P, right? Why yeah, did you see, change your name from? Uh, how you said it? See how you just said it? You say it so. See, I'm from the wall. It's like our school system's fucked up, so they okay. don't teach us proper English. Okay. I said Corner. Okay, I'm. So, hey, bro, see, I'm from New York. We say it a little up. different. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> my accent fucked up. You feel me? So my accent heavy. So when okay. I hear people say it, I'm like, that's not my name. My name is Connor. You feel me? But that's the proper way to pronounce it. Right. But outside of that, I changed it because, like you say, like I'm with Spittle Moose of Jet Life. Mm-hmm. My life is transitioning to better. I'm not mm-hmm. on the block all day. Right. I have a condo in fucking Buckhead. Like, I'm living better. So outside of that, I'm getting a little older. and Like, I'm not 16. Right. I have a daughter. I have a son. 
I don't want them to be looking up to a corner boy P, not saying the name validates the person. It's just that when you have some, have you never heard of me and somebody be like, yeah, man, I've been listening to this artist, Corner Boy P. You're going to automatically put me in a box. But that nigga must be a trap rapper. Ooh, he must it. be mm -hmm. this. When there's a whole lot of other shit going on. So I felt like for the brand, for the transition, for just everything overall, it is it was only right to lean towards Fendi P. I always was Fendi P on Instagram. My first project under Jet Life was Fendi P. Right. You feel me? So it wasn't like a drastic change. It was just like I was, it was corner boy and then the alter ego. Now I am the alter ego. Mm, okay. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a good change. I like the way that you put it, how you, like how your name change uh, signified your growth as a person, as an artist, the way your lifestyle was and, and like, you know, wanting to set uh, a different example for your children as well as, you know, it's like, I'm not that person no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing other things now. So, and the box yeah, part, that was, that was good. If I wanted to, if I wanted to be like, start a program and go to talk to like trouble youth, mm -hmm. your kid come home and be like, dad, tomorrow we're going to have a rapper come speak to us. And his name is Corner Boy P. You'd be like, no, the fuck he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> no nigga named Corner, nothing is talking to my child. You feel me? Yeah. Like, it's a failure to me if I raise my, my son just like how I was raised. In the right. ghetto, in the hood, just doing dumb shit. So I got to create a better example for my, my kids. I'm not responsible for other people's kids. Right. Just I'm only responsible for my household. Right, right. And you were talking a little bit about New Orleans and like the New Orleans rap. Um, what What is your, I guess, current take of, on like current New Orleans rap culture and where, you know, you fit in and where New Orleans rap culture fits into the larger uh, scope of hip hop? Man, um, our culture keep getting robbed. You know what I'm saying? Like they keep taking from certain songs. They're taking the bounce. They're taking that. So that's one part of the culture. They take in the old part of the culture, which is cash, money, no limit. So they take in the, the bounce culture, then they take in the, the founders of the music culture, but they're not opening the door to let in any new artists. Mm, okay. They're rob, 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 uh, uh, pay to use, uh, sample, sample, sample. But we don't break in. Like, if you look at Spitter, he's to me, my personal opinion, the biggest artist that's in New Orleans, that's still mm. in New Orleans, that you actually see. You right. see him outside. He don't even get played on the radio. So how the fuck me being under him, how is that going to encourage me to even do a record that could be played on the radio? Right. Which I still do, because that's just the type of music I make. But when you look at it like, damn, Spitter got a song with everybody under the sun except for Jesus. And they don't play none of his music on the radio. So they definitely not about to play mine. I'm with his artist. So to me, we don't have a music scene. Mm. We have a underground scene. You have Jet Life. Jet Life to me is the biggest thing in New Orleans. But until it has a platform to showcase the value of the label of, of, of the artist, the CEO, the manager, then you have everybody else that's feeling like shit. I ain't gotta get with your life. I could just do my own thing because I could be your life. So it's like I feel like it's it's a lot of people just working in circles because we don't have that one outlet, right? Which would be radio. When I'm in Atlanta, I hear I just heard uh, a record a while ago, um, Twenty One Savage and J Cole a lot. I never heard that record on the radio anymore. Really? Not saying they didn't play it. I never heard it. Oh, that record was, even up here in New York, that record was being played on the radio. That record was a big record. But we have, and listen, I had a record with Lil Wayne. And the radio, I feel like the radio station felt like it wasn't a good enough record to play. Okay. But I felt like when you're doing business, even if you don't like a record, so what's the difference between playing a record you don't like that you have to play than playing a record that could potentially open the door for your whole city. Right. Because when, if I, if I was to come out with that record with Lil Wayne and go bananas, 
labels will come to New Orleans and look for the next record. Just like they went to Baton Rouge and looked for the next Kevin Gates. Mm -hmm. Or they went to New York looking for the next whoever. You mm -hmm. feel me? It's just like, it's a politic thing. So we don't have that outlet. So we don't right. have a music scene. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of talented artists in New Orleans. But they don't have the platform. Jet Life is a platform that allows me to work the internet. I can move around. Right. Off the internet. A lot of people in New Orleans don't have that big ass platform. They see you as not currency. Right. The manager is not Moose. Mm -hmm. Their label is not Jet Life. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's to me it's fucked up. Like it's 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 a chaos. <laughs> So if there was a way where you could like, what what would you think would be able to give these artists like um, a better platform? Like, what would you like? What a would you change? Shot. A fair shot. Like, I don't know the politics of radio, but I assume that it costs money. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a mix show, something something that allows. All right, I don't. I'm not a professor, so I think they play, if I had to guess, I feel like they play seven records mm -hmm. on the fucking video. Every, every seven records, they play those same seven records and commercials. Right. And some, if, you, if it's a record that you genuinely like or it's a record that genuinely have potential, add that motherfucker into the rotation after a Rihanna or a Chris Brown or a Drake or a the Baby. Add it after those so you get the people in the city are option to be like, oh, I heard this song. I like this song. Who is this person? I'm going to go listen to more music from this person. Right. And that artist now has a support system now. Because you can go to the studio every day long, all day long, every day, make music, tweet the link. And motherfuckers is not, if the traction is not there, then you, you'll just be wasting your time. Right. So I agree. Third, like, you got to realize, like, concerts, they make people perform, pay to perform. That's the dub. Like, why? You just gave this nigga $50,000, but you want me to give you 1200 to open up for him. So it's like, it's no system to help the artist. So it need, like, it needs something. You need, like, you need people that's from the city, that's in the city, that's out and about, that want to see the city do. Because when you think about New Orleans, you think it's a party city. Right. We, yep. we don't even have five clubs. Really? You feel me? We I don't have five that. clubs. I did <laughs> not even know that. For me, is the Jet Lounge. Every Wednesday. It's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, we just need a better support system for the up-and-coming artists that don't have an uh, internet platform or uh, underground platform. Because like I say, it's, a, it's dope artists. It's just that one... When one artist, like right now, it's, I'm, I guarantee you, before the corona shit happened, a and was all up and down North Carolina looking for the next baby. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a, it's a, it's a weak-ass system that they do. I, listen, <laughs> I went to label meetings with me and Brick. Shout out to Brick. I went to label meetings when I had the Lil Wayne record, just to... to um, you know, just to, to poke him and see Test how... Test the waters. Shit. Yeah. They was telling me Lil Wayne wasn't shit. He didn't matter. Right. Lil Wayne came out and went platinum his first week. So when they was telling me he didn't matter, I'm like, y'all don't know what y'all doing because I guarantee every artist on your label will give 75% of their budget just to get a Lil Wayne verse. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's fucked up, the, the game. It's politics, yeah. Yep. But I feel like you have a good head on your shoulders about everything. And I see, and I feel like that, you know, you actively want to help out these up and coming artists out of Louis, out of or New Orleans and, and the state and the city. For I don't want to be the only one. Like, I don't want to pull up and I'm the only one with a Porsche and right. niggas looking at me like I'm a steak. Right. You feel, I want everybody to be demand everybody to be to get whatever they feel like they just do like so if there's some people in the city i fuck with i'm gonna give them a verse i'm gonna put them on my shit i see they shit i'm gonna retweet it i'm not gonna go look for it 
if I see it, I'm gonna retweet it. It right. don't hurt, you know what I'm saying? So support is free. It, it helps the whole picture. You know what I'm saying? Some people are, are tilt their hat and give you a credit and be like, oh, so, so and so made a play for me and it helped me out. I'm grateful mm -hmm. for that. Some people won't, but you don't let others or what others do affect how you, how you genuinely are. So I want to see niggas win. Like, especially if they do music because it's so hard to do music and be creative when everybody else just monkey see, monkey do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely want to help as much as I can. But it's also a competition. So I can't do too much because you, <laughs> you feel me? This is a competitive sport. Yeah, because your idols become your rivals. Yeah, you feel me? So I can't really, I'm, I could do I could do a little bit, but I can't do too much, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, but I love everything you're saying. I feel like, you know, I feel like you have a good philosophy about this. And, like, you know, between the new project and you being able to support, um, help and support all these artists coming out of your city, I feel like, you know, New Orleans still has a very, like, bright future ahead of it in terms of uh, of hip-hop and rap. Nah, we go, we go, we go. We're going to shake, you know, all, every time, you know, a broke clock will write twice a day. So it's, it's going to come back around to that time to, well, uh, you know, get back to a high. And, and people want to have the option to get their recognition, to get their shit off, you know what I'm saying? As long as they stay mm -hmm. consistent and keep putting out their music. Right. So tell me, what else do the people got to know that you got coming up? What else you got? You got anything in the works, anything you want to promote? You know, we got... Smoking Partners out now with Currency. Smoking Partners yes. out. We did an uh, animated video. Shout out to Shana. Um, she from Canada. She um, did the video. That shit nice. Um, I got uh, Corner Boy versus Fendi. Ooh. That's my next project I want to, my next album that I want to put out. When's that coming out? When You got a date for that yet or are you just working on it, just trying to get everything sorted out? Yeah, I kind of want to wait until they open outside back up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I ain't tripping. I got like I got projects. I got I got Gold BBS. I got um Three Side with me and Nino Calvin. I got uh Player Made. You know what I'm saying? So I have I got a movie that I'm planning on working oh, on. Oh wow, that's dope. Yeah, I'm called Gold BBS. So I'm working. I, I stay working. I work every day. Well, dope, man. I want to thank you again so much for taking the time out of your day, taking out the time out of the quarantine to come chop it up with me about the new project, about New Orleans, everything. I feel like there are a lot of gems in here that um, a lot of artists could take away uh, from what you said today. I feel like, you know, that you gave out some solid advice and I think people could learn a lot from, from your words. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you for having me. Hey, man, let the people know where they can follow you at, where they can stream your music at, all that beautiful stuff. Fendi P. Fendi underscore P on Instagram, real Fendi P on Twitter. I got music streaming on the Corner Boy P. Hella music streaming on the Corner Boy P. I got music on the Fendi P. Smoking Partners out, Fendi P3, Carrera Red, The Green Tape by Spitter, Don't Ask Why by TY, Jet Life Apparel, Get You Some Fly Shit. <laughs> Love it. How soon, Carrera That's, Red. I like that hat. That hat hard. Match my call, you know what I'm saying? So it's coming out soon. I'll mean, just be doing some player shit, that's it. Fendi P, that life 100. There you go, man. Fendi P on the radar, my brother. Thank you again. I appreciate you.